hijab defiance in Iran. Foreign spies blamed for women's resistance. <laughs> Iran's government is doubling down on enforcing mandatory hijab laws, igniting a firestorm of backlash from Iranian women. In an effort to clamp down on dissent, authorities have proposed stationing verbal reminder hijab enforcement groups in Tehran metro stations, and even installing surveillance cameras to identify and penalize women in public. Iran's judiciary has promised to fine women 1 million tumans, which is about $236 USD, if they were found guilty of not wearing the hijab. The head of the judiciary, Golam Hussein uh, Mosseni Ijay, even claimed that women who don't obey the mandatory hijab laws are cooperating with foreign spy agencies. Despite the defiance from the Iranian population, the government remains unwavering in its stance, insisting that the hijab is, quote, one of the civilizational foundations of the Iranian nation and, quote, one of the practical principles of the Islamic Republic. How are the spies involved exactly? How are the spies not involved, honestly? If you're the Iranian <laughs> state, if you're the Islamic Republic, how are spies not involved is the better question. Because apparently mm -hmm. they seem to run everything within their country. They seem to be able to get in, in, in anywhere they want. But somehow the Islamic Republic is still so big and scary, but they're infiltrated everywhere at the same time. And it's all everything bad that happens. It's foreign agents, but we're, we're strong. But we're constantly getting infiltrated like what mixed messaging here anyways so they're accused of being spies in a few ways so first sometimes they say that the women who are not wearing hijab are themselves acting on behest of foreign powers right so they're just saying if you don't want to wear hijab like you're like a foreign agent this is espionage blah 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 and then sometimes it's the more standard accusation of you know, being influenced by foreign agents, being influenced by Israel, of course. Just the same old BS that never really means anything new. Just excuses. Um, but what was a bigger um, news, I'm not news, part of the bigger piece of it that caught more international attention was the um, the surveillance aspect that's being rolled out. Um, that really shocked a lot of people. And um, the banning of women not wearing hijab from the Tehran metro. Like, you're not wearing hijab, you cannot go on the metro, you're banned. So what was... You have a video. Yes, huh? I would like you to pull that up, please. And yes. this is... Can you, like, yeah, translate this and read the caption explain to us have, what's happening i have my own video of metro as well i don't know if you've seen guys um, i have i i post some interesting videos about what's happening in iran sometimes on my twitter um at armin navobi so we we have an instagram post here but when we go to my twitter account i'll show you a video of metro as well so this is like a video that the officials recorded themselves to show how well this is happening and how the new ways of enforcing hijab it doesn't involve because they want to make it like less hostile so that the massa i mean stuff doesn't happen again so they're like look we're going to do this more civilized okay so we're going to enforce the hijab rules more civilized so you can a lot of women in iran are just not wearing the hijab at all like it's the law but they're just not wearing it so they're like they want to try to not arrest these women anymore but they were like okay if you want to go to the metro or use the bank or whatever uh, you need to wear the hijab or else we won't let you in. So this is them showing how the new practice, how the new measures are working yeah, so well. Yeah, this is like right? a they're propaganda like, video put out by the state. Yeah, they're like, look, look, this is, this, we're doing it very politely, very nicely. So like this. <laughs> like she's like, uh, dear lady, if you want to receive services, please put on your hijab. So this is not the metro. I think this is the airport. I have a metro version. This is mm. the airport. Let me see. Yeah, this is an airport. Oh, so the woman who's wearing the hijab fully, she, they're being thanked for wearing the hijab. Oh my god! So like, it's like thank you so much for wearing your hijab. <laughs> so he's telling her thank you for wearing hijab, and she's not wearing hijab. So he's gonna go to her and say like. 
Thank you for doing your job and I've had oh. her. So she's looking at her. Basically, he said thank you. Oh. What? You're just trying to humiliate her. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you need to wear it as well so, so I can provide you a service. Like, uh, dear lady, please wear your hijab so I could give you service. Same so she's as he's at thanking her for wearing the hijab. So he's like, please wear your hijab. Hey, hey, like she's trying to resist so, like for for get for, for getting services you need to wear your hijab and i think she's like i'm wearing a hat like she's covering her own hair. Uh -huh. like, you have to do it now it's, it's disgusting, isn't it? Like, it's they, they so put disgusting. This... The idea that this is put out and put on TV and put on state media to be like, this is the behavior that we want from other people. It's so gross to me. Yeah, yeah Darko is saying that's so passive aggressive. And it's supposed to be like, this is so polite and this is so nice, blah, blah, blah. But we're here to like, you see how he's specifically looking at that woman and shaming her to the other people, right? That's what bothers yeah. me the most. So I have a better version. This is the metro. So now in metro, they're having got people there standing and not letting you in unless you wear the hijab, right? So I, I, so these are in Persian. So if you come to my Twitter account, I give you a proper explanation of exactly what's happening. So my caption says, um, "A courageous woman uh, confronts hijab enforcement at a metro in, at the at a metro in Iran. Initially forced to wear a headscarf to pass through, she quickly removes it. So she passes. She puts it on to." To be able to go through the gate and right after she passes she takes it off again she removes it uh, to proudly display her hair defying the enforcer's authority telling him look what beautiful hair i have <laughs> so, yeah. but she also sw she also swore at him a couple of times uh, i didn't translate that part but look at the whole this <laughs> <laughs> like she, she called him Bina Moose. Bina Moose. Look, like Bina Moose. Look what beautiful hair I have. Um, and then she said, Takunet Besuze. Like, so maybe that you're so it's so that your ass burns. It means <laughs> it's so, so it, it basically like so yeah, you get jealous. You know, look at my hair. Mm. So get jealous of how so beautiful you burn like, with jealousy, yeah. With burn burn with jealousy, exactly. Wait, what does like, Namus you don't mean? have Namus means uh, Namus is something that we don't agree with, like, uh, but Namus is the person that is your that you have Qayrat over. Mm. Anyways, it's complicated. So you're saying without Namus, it. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, look at so this is the 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 guard. So, so she had to put her hijab and she said the woman who's recording she's refusing to put on the hijab so she's staying she's not going to use the metro the other lady put the hijab in and she's like like dirt be upon your head <laughs> so this lady is like i'm not going to put the hijab on so she's like, he's like, if you're not going to put it on, then get it, go away. And that lady just said, be namus. And now this part. So look, look, what beautiful hair I have. <laughs> she's like. She walks through and then pulls it off. <laughs> yeah, she walks through and then pulls it off. Like, look, what beautiful hair I have. And the, this guy is trying to knock off the phone off of the recorder's hand. Mm. This is this part again. This is like this. <laughs> 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 Anyways, this is the state of affairs right now in Iran. Oh my gosh. Antoine oh, okay. gave us a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much. Saying I missed some flight because some a-hole wouldn't take my bag without a hijab. Are you serious? Wow. Well, we got guys, we're getting a super chat from inside Iran. Amazing. I mean, I, I'm assuming. Well, I mean, if you, if you miss your flight, I'm assuming you're still in Iran. <laughs> well, Damn. wow. Okay. So, so you, ref think... Anto 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 Anto, so you refuse to put on your hijab? Like you were like, I'm not going to go in? That is pretty, that's pretty badass. 
Yeah. What okay. do you think about the doubling down that's going on? And what do you think about the measures that they're attempting to take right now to still enforce a job, but like not piss off the population? Like how do you think that this like Tehran metro ban is really going to stick? Okay, it's too much now. They can't the the cat is out of the bag. They can't. Remember we discussed this, right? It was too g far gone back then. Now you, you, Susie, if you go in Upper Tehran, you can't even recognize it as Upper Tehran anymore. Like people women are just walking without hijab. It's like 50%. It's 50%. It's insane, okay? It's, it, it, there's no way that they could enforce all of this. It's it's a it's a lost cause, but the thing is that they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Because the Islamic Republic wants to let go of the hijab laws, right? Because it's it has been too costly for them, but they have a very religious base, which is the only remaining supporters of the regime, and they're not gonna let it. If they turn on the Islamic Republic, then there's nobody left to be the supportive of the Islamic Republic. And they're, they're, they're terrified. So we have like a majority of people who are against the hijab laws, but a minority of people who are for it, and they are very, very, very adamant about keeping them. So much and so much so that they're willing to give their lives for it because their understanding is that the Islamic Republic of Iran is the country. It's the flag that Imam Mehdi is supposed to come back and take from the rapper, from the supreme leader of Iran and start the revolution to take over the world. And not enforcing Islamic laws in Iran means that we have not kept our promise to Mehdi to give this country and give this government and give this army to him. And they are willing to die. Some of these people are willing to die. They're, they would become against the regime. If these and these people are a lot more violent, they're a lot more willing to sacrifice their lives, they're a lot more influential and are uh, have their tentacles, they're within the regime, right? So even though they're a minority, them going against the regime, it's a lot more costly to the regime. So what the regime is trying to do is to um go back and forth, right? So it's trying to loosen up hijab laws and get these people screaming and then then tighten it up again a little bit, but slowly go back and forth. And then but the average would be towards it, it's exactly what happened with the executions. Right. So all of these um, religious radicals were so angry about why executions are not taking place. Right. So the government came in, executed one person to see that they could quiet them down and executed one more. So the government is not going to enforce the job laws as strictly as it did before, but it's going to pretend like it is. Do you know what I mean? So it wants to throw meat at these people to be like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's going to do less, but it's going to highlight the things that it's doing and try to pretend that these people are devastating. We're freezing their bank accounts. They can't get into the metro. Look, look, mm -hmm. look what we did to this. Just so that these, these religious nut jobs are satisfied because they are such a threat to them. So they're, they're, they're really stuck because if they start enforcing hijab laws as aggressively as before, a mass situation is going to happen again. It's just going to happen. And they were like, they cannot tolerate another mass way of coming at them because they they really saw the end of them. They were like they were so close. They were panicking. They oh, themselves they were, were believing. Staring in the mirror, getting real close with themselves. Yeah, yeah. So they're Having like, we need some to avoid that. Negotiations between me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they want to avoid that, but they're also terrified of what we call the Khan Masabis, you know. So which is like the crazy, crazy nut jobs. The hardliners. That, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, we call it an array, which means a um, saw, mm. a saw in your ass. So when you have a saw, yeah. So we call we call it a saw situation because if you have an if you have a saw stuck in your ass, okay, it's very painful, but you can't you can't take it out because if you pull if you push in, it's hard. If you leave it there, it's painful. If you pull it out, it's either whatever you do is going to be very painful, right? So we call it a saw situation, but it's an error situation means like we have a 
saw up your ass and you don't know what to do. You either push, pull, leave it there. Either way, you're you're stuck. Yes, you, you say in English, we say stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, in Persian, we say array. You have a saw array, up your array. ass. <laughs> I just said the sorry up your ass. <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> That's so much better. Yo, yeah. Persian sayings and insults are some of the best in the world. They're so funny. <laughs> um, oh, we got more super chats. We got a couple of super chats. Oh my god. Oh, so she was oh she was saying two dollars. Yeah, Antoine with the joke? hijab at the plane was making a joke. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. And oh Asian American saying, why does Tehran have better trains than New York City? Well, I mean, because it's, it's a New low York bar. <laughs> yeah, because it's New York City. That's not a good that's not a high bar. Yeah. That's not a yeah. Um, or, yeah. yeah. Standards. Come on. But thank Thank you for the $2 super chat. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.